Hi, I'm Marcel. Welcome back to The Pulse. Today, we're going to discuss human trials. Some of those are starting to come out. And I want you to stick with this, if you can, please, to the end. If you have to jump ahead, jump ahead, because I think you might be surprised at basically my view of the trials, the methods of the trials, the purpose of the trials, the limits of the trials, and some of the benefits of the trials. So um, stick around if you can till the end. I think it'll pay off for you, whether or not you're on this side of the spectrum or the other side of the spectrum, meaning the skeptical side or the overly optimistic side or anywhere in between. I think you're gonna get something from this. There's something, from, for, there's something in this for everyone. I'm an equal opportunity vlogger. The trial in question is uh, on a medical journal, MDPI. Uh, this is also covered, by the way, by Brad Stanfield. You may or may not have seen his video about this. He has his own sort of take on the data. So uh, I'm, I'm going to address Brad's thoughts as well as part of this. Uh, everything's valid here, right? It's valid to test. It's valid to question the tests. It's valid to be a skeptic. It's valid to be optimistic. It really depends on your position and where you are in the risk reward scenario of supplementing. But keep in mind, there are other things involved to increasing NAD levels and getting results or anti-aging benefits as I cover extensively on my channel, it's not just about taking NMN, it's about the things you take with it and the lifestyle changes that you make to your diet and exercise routine that really maximize the effectiveness of these longevity pathways. Let's start off with the title here, Effect of 12-Week Intake of NMN on Sleep Fatigue uh, or sleep quality, fatigue, and physical performance in older Japanese adults. It's a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study, which is obviously what you want in a human trial. Now, I want to read some of these sections for you. I also do recommend you go ahead and watch Brad's video because he also dives into some of the data. Yes, he has sort of this preconceived assumption of the results, which again is a valid approach. Uh, I believe I'm looking at it a little more optimistically and positively, but also maybe even I may I may I may show you that I'm a little bit more uh, against some of the reading of these results by the author. So I may be even anti-test in this case even more than Brad in some ways, in some ways not. Here we go. It starts off with deteriorating sleep quality and physical or mental fatigue in older adults leads to decreased quality of life and increased mortality rates. This study investigated the effects of the time-dependent intake of NMN on sleep quality, fatigue, and physical performance in older adults. This randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study evaluated 108 participants divided into four groups. Basically, people who took NMN in the morning, people who took it in the afternoon, people who took the placebo in the morning, and took the placebo in the afternoon. Uh, NMN, they took 250 milligrams. Now, we have to kind of stop the record right there, scratch the needle across the record, and hold up for a moment. Um, 250 milligrams is half of a typical dosage or that's in one capsule of, uh, say, a, a, the most common NMN sold. It's usually sold in 500 milligram capsules. Do Not Age is my supplier for NMN. They're the ones that I've had lab tested and I have a high level of trust with. Uh, their capsules are 500 milligrams. Their spoons in their powder that I take under my tongue every day is 500 milligrams per spoon. And I'm taking now four of those. Granted, as I've mentioned before, uh, probably three is the sweet spot. I think that's where I net most of my discernible results from, from NMN, about, about six times what was used in this human clinical trial that happened over 12 weeks. I've been taking NMN now for nine months and I gradually worked my way up. So it's as if we looked at the first couple months, two, three months of taking NMN, but we never get to the graduation that most people experience. Most people do start low and build their way up. So this is like a phase one human trial or a step one, quarter one. It, it, it's not the first trimester, right? It's not even to me, a full you know, test. But that said, there's a lot of great information in here. So I think as a starting point, it's a good way to start digging into the data. Um, this was uh, administered once a day for 12 weeks. The sweep, sleep quality was evaluated using the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. 
Fatigue was evaluated uh, using a questionnaire. Uh, grip, strength, five times sit to stand, uh, and timed up and go in a five meter habitual walk were evaluated to assess with the physical performance. Um, really? Really? <laughs> uh, you know, they put mice on a treadmill and had them run three or four kilometers, you know, and they broke the treadmill, taking them in. Uh, we can't get humans on a treadmill f for a mile, a kilometer, something. Um, I, I sense here a theme. Uh, timidness, timidness. Uh, we're being being very careful, and I think there are ethical and legal reasons why these trials, at least in the early stages, start off so timidly. Um, I think 250 milligrams is probably the safest amount that they can give based on the science that's widely available or perceived safest amount, and they never really get into a more robust and they never get into some other things that I'm going to talk about soon. But the physical tests, I mean, I'm running three and a half miles once a week. Uh, I started uh, two years ago before I was taking pretty much any supplements. I had just started on resveratrol. I could barely run a mile at all in a super terrible time. I was going like it was an old man run, you know, and I was in pain for two, three days afterwards, by the way. Now I'm running fluidly and playing tennis the same day that I can run three and a half miles. And over the past six months, even having some physical setbacks, um, I was able to recover, respond, and I improved my three and a half mile time by eight minutes. I'm down to just over 30 minutes now for a three and a half mile run. So that's a robust human trial that I'm conducting on myself. In addition to that, I'm exercising and stretching a total of about four to five hours every day. So this just feels inadequate. It feels, it's frankly, almost laughable when you consider what it would really take to reverse your aging. It's going to have to take a lot more than sitting up, sitting, standing up, sitting down. Sorry. That's just, I'm sure that there are scientific reasons and ethical reasons and, you know, putting elderly people on a treadmill, you know, right away, you're opening yourself up to some uh, legal responsibility there. And, and uh, you know, I understand that, but at the same time, Hard for me to read too much into this data, knowing that that was the bar. Stand up, sit down. Um, they do say that the NMN afternoon group demonstrated the largest effect size for the results for standing, sit down, stand up, test, and drowsiness. Overall, NMN intake in the afternoon effectively improved lower limb function and reduced drowsiness in older adults. These findings suggest the potential of NMN in preventing loss of physical performance and improving fatigue in older adults. Now, I don't think that's outside the realm of what the data shows. When you scroll down and look at the charts, there was improvement in the afternoon group of NMN takers, but there was also improvement, some improvement, not as much, in uh, the placebo afternoon group. And again, they're not saying, hey, we have specifically found that it works, right? They're saying these findings suggest the potential of NMN. So now let's talk about Brad Stanfield's comments. Like he really goes after this, uh, saying that the data doesn't support that argument, but that argument is so thin and, and the test is so weak that I don't know what you're railing against, Brad, because there's not much here to go on anyway. So my problem with this, with this human trial goes way beyond whether or not the data is, is statistically significant. I think it probably is, but that's it. Like that's a pretty low bar. If we're looking for stati statistical significance, I think there's enough there in this data to be significant, but again, to suggest the potential. And that's really all I think we have here. However, again, some really good language that I think we should start paying attention to. And then, the, then they suggest some things that we should expand upon as well. The functions of human tissues and organs deteriorate gradually with aging and cellular damage or stress also leads to cell senescence, which further contributes to dysfunction in various tissues. In addition, oxidants produced by mitochondria accumulate alongside aging and cause oxidative damage, which further accelerates the aging of cells and tissues, in particular age-related mitochondrial DNA deletion mutations accumulate focally in skeletal muscles 
leading to fiber atrophy, loss of muscle mass, and dysfunction. The decline in muscle and physical functions in, in the elderly may further cause genetic ge geriatric symptoms, such as sarcopenia and frailty. Nothing new here, but I'm, I'm trying to assimilate you guys a little bit to the language involved so that we can then kind of get a better sense of where, how to read these human trials going forward. The symptom frequently occurs, this symptom frequently occurs among the elderly and has been complained by 27 to 50% of community dwelling older adults in their daily life. Fatigue is strongly associated with not only dullness and depression, but also cognitive dysfunction and sleep disturbances. In addition, chronic fatigue contributes to not only sleep disturbance and other sleep problems such as sleep latency, waking up during the night, waking up too early, but also physical dysfunction and physical inactivity. Definitely a correlation or relation to the quality of our sleep and the quality of our physical activity. Age is related to sleep disorders and approximately 36% of older adults complain of insomnia. This, the causes of sleep disorders are known as delayed circadian rhythm with aging, lower dysfunction, uh, lower physical function and or activity, and a decrease in social interaction. Interesting. Um, also, also hypnotic medications are used to solve these sleep disorders. In other words, th these medications put you in a hypnotic state to get you to sleep. Um, they may cause side effects, such as increased falls risk, making you kind of clumsy, makes sense, and decreased cognitive function, slowing down your brain. So you're slowing down your body so you could sleep, but it also slows down your brain. Um, therefore, the American Geriatric Society recommends that older adults avoid sleeping pills as long-term dependence on medications such as sleeping pills can have adverse secondary health effects. So what's interesting to, to me is I've slept much better and other people have reported sleeping much better um, if you, but when taking NMN. So that alone is gonna help lead to some of the other circadian rhythm benefits and physical exercise benefits. How much is due to just sleeping better? Is NMN just helping us sleep better, getting in our blood? This this we, we kind of addressed that in this human trial, and I think that's why they looked at sleep. However, you know, unless you're 50, 60 years old, and you're truly waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and then taking NMN and not waking up, and taking a significant dose of NMN and sleeping through the night, I don't, I don't think you're really qualified to measure this or, to, or speak to this. You know, it's a little easier, at least from my perspective, when I'm being, you know, over 55, being now 57, and sleeping better when I take NMN. Like, to me, it's it's worth it for that alone. But there have been many other health benefits I've experienced that, frankly, unless you've hit that wall, unless you've turned 40, 50 years old, I just think it's kind of hard to speak to. It's not to diminish anyone's validity for speaking on this topic. I welcome everybody to make videos. I think we need a thousand times more videos about aging. And I appreciate what Brad does actually quite a lot. And I do watch his videos. I want to skip ahead slightly to where it says, reportedly NAD plus levels can be increased by dietary NR and NMN. The biosynthetic precursors of the salvage pathway in NAD metabolism, intake of NMN is expected to increase the concentration of NAD+. And even Brad says, yes, we know that. NMN and NR increase NAD levels in our blood. Um, but what we don't see anything really addressing, which David Sinclair has talked extensively about, are further ways to strengthen this uh, salvage pathway. mTOR, AMPK, sirtuins. Sirtuins are only briefly mentioned in this study. They mentioned sirtuin-1, and that's pretty much it. Sirt-1 is essential for maintaining physical activity, skeletal muscle, mitochondrial function, and sleep quality. Yet, there isn't any specific information about how other supplements can work alongside in concert with NMN and how diet and exercise literally can help you uh, manage your sort one levels. So there's some vague information and vague mention, probably more to set up the actual trial information. But from what I'm seeing here, they gave people a small, low dosage of NMN for 12 weeks. They tested them in very non-robust type of tests and conditions. They may be very valid scientifically. 
However, they're not in line with the reality of how the mice were tested. I mean, we have it. We have mice. We have it. Model organisms have very specific advantages. Their lifespans are shortened, so we can look at them in a, in, in a faster period of time. We can kind of go through their lifespan much more quickly and discern things from that. We can, frankly, cut them open and look at the muscle tissue directly in mice that had the supplements and mice that didn't. Uh, we can we can have them run on a treadmill for as long as they want. If they die on the treadmill, I mean, it's kind of in, all in the name of science, as, as terrible as it sounds. To some of us, I mean, it is just reality. We can't do that with humans. We can't do any of those things with humans. The lifespans from humans is way, way longer than mice. And, um, you know, we just can't put elderly Japanese or anybody on treadmills for multiple miles and uh, multiple times a month um, to test them. So, and then we certainly can't go cutting people open to look inside their tissue. So not so easily anyway, we could take really small biopsies of tissue, but you know, can we go in there and just cut them open? And it gets very expensive now to test these different levels the way that we can with mice, where we're testing not only the supplements, but intermittent fasting, a proper diet, um, eating fit, more fish, less red meat, eating leafy vegetables. None of that is addressed within the scope of this human trial. So my hope is that there's gonna be more robust trials. My belief is we're gonna to have to wait decades. So to summarize all of this, these human trials are important. They're just starting to come out. The great part of it is safety seems to be repeatedly okay, although they're testing very small dosages and it probably is because they really wanna make sure there are no safety issues. So. I think in the meantime, I get back to what I've been saying the whole time. When you've got a risk reward scenario where you don't want to wait 10, 20 years or more to get hard scientific proof, you kind of have to be your own human trial in a way or lean on others, which is why I encourage people to comment, post their experiences. Skepticism is totally fine. Uh, we, we invite it here at The Pulse. Uh, we want to hear from you guys who believe and don't believe and also other ideas. I've, I've gleaned from you other ideas and other approaches beyond just supplements just from listening to your feedback and adopted some of those things in my daily routines as well. So uh, there is improvement mostly, as they mentioned, in the afternoon um, NMN, but there are also some improvements in the placebo. It's, it appears taking something in the afternoon does have a placebo impact, but again, small dosage, not working on all the pathways, and why are we not happy with seeing some better results, some statistical results that are better when taking NMN as opposed to not, when we're really just looking at a few things anyway, it's at least somewhere to start that's positive. See you next time, more to come.